Fun Nation. My name is James, checking in here at the first championship with Team 4481, Team Rembrandt, coming all the way from the Netherlands. Incredible robot, this open alliance team. Documented it throughout the whole year on their build block. There's so much to learn about this team from that, but as well as on their robot. We're gonna find out so much more. I have Unique and Mark. Let's dive into this incredible machine. Fariscape here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Andy Mark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to andymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Get ready for one of the most unique and competitive events of the year with the Kettering All-Star Alliance Invitational. Preform your alliance to compete against other preformed alliances for the entire competition. This event will take place August 8th and 9th and applications are open through June 2nd. You can get more information by scanning the QR code, going to funderboxnetwork.com slash allstar25 or checking out the post on Chief Delphine. All right, Unique, why don't you get us started with the mechanical aspects of this robot? What makes yeah. the Rembrandts cook so much? Yeah, thanks for having us. So uh, I will start out with the drivetrain. This year we switched to uh, the SDS MK4N modules uh, and uh, they have been working quite well for us because the footprint is quite small so it's really nice integrated with the robot. Uh, we power them uh, through two uh, Rav Neo Vortexes uh, and for now yeah, it's, it has worked really nice for us. Um, in the beginning of the year we immediately knew that we had to keep our center of gravity really low because uh, obviously we needed to reach far up in the air. So therefore, our whole uh, belly pan and all the tubes on the drivetrain uh, are made of stainless steel, uh, which is quite heavy and it really helps uh, when driving around. Uh, it's really hard to tip over. Uh, so it's, uh, yeah, it has helped us uh, throughout the season to uh, stay upright as much as possible. Uh, then uh, we made uh, a one-stage elevator for this game, uh, mainly because we don't really have a lot of experience making elevators and um, it would be easier for us and within the resources that we have to make it at one stage. And also for uh, all the wiring, it's nice because uh, the motors can stay in the drivetrain uh, and uh, yeah, it's just easier to make it. Uh, on our uh, elevator, we made a gripper with a pivot. This pivot was needed to reach the height that we wanted because uh, our robot is almost max height and we needed to reach a bit further up to uh, really get to that L4 level. So. Uh, we included a pivot right here. And uh, to this gripper is our uh, uh, Corel G gripper attached. This is a gripper that can both store a coral right here and also an LG uh, right here. So when we intake a coral, we go to the coral station and uh, our human player throws a coral in this big funnel that we have over here. And uh, the wheels in our gripper will just spin they are powered with only one uh, Vortex here and then with the use of different belts and some gears we can power all four axles with wheels uh, in the right direction. Uh, when it's running up to the funnel it will just intake here and we use a, a distance sensor right here. This distance sensor uh, can see whether there's a coral in there and once it senses a coral uh, it's just implemented in the code that we stop this motor. So then uh, we can just store our coral here and uh, drive around. And then uh, for our LG gripper, it kind of works the same. We also use a distance sensor here. And then uh, once it senses um, an LG, first the wheels will stop, it will start rotating. And uh, uh, once it's in there, they will also stop. Uh, and it makes it really easy to, to intake the LG. And since we have this nice, curved out uh, shape here, uh, the LG is hold really tight and we can drive around and flip, it up, and flip the elevator up in the air and flip the pivot without it uh, falling out. So that really helps for us to, uh, to make sure everything is uh, yeah, secured tightly when we drive around. Very interesting. Can you tell me a little bit more about this climber mechanism here? How did you guys actually prototype and make this climb work so well for you guys? Yeah, so I think our climber is one of the subsystems that we made the most iterations on. Uh, our elevator is right in the middle of the robot, so uh, we had some difficulties during the regionals to uh, climb in a legal way because our uh, because the chain really touched the, the, the axle here quite a lot. And uh, since our gripper reaches quite far down, we had to make a climber that could be packaged in the robot really nice, but also should be able to make a legal climb. So uh, 
we made this climber. It has, uh, it is powered uh, through one motor right here, and it can just click out right here with these passive ledges. And once it's locked in place, it can't turn back. And then uh, via this motor, we can power this pivot. So currently it's folded out and uh, our driver can drive up to the cage. Uh, and via this funnel, the cage will uh, get turned in, an, in the right uh, orientation and uh, it will get locked via these passive ledges. Uh, these ledges have an end stop right here. So once the cage is in, it will not come out. Uh, and then we can pivot this uh, climber back and the case will rotate with it and we will climb. And during our climb, uh, we also implemented that the uh, pivot will flip all the way back here. So therefore our pivot and uh, gripper will not interfere while climbing. Incredible iteration. Thank you so much for talking about that. I'd like to shift it over now to Mark to talk a little bit more about the software side of the things. What are the Rembrandts doing software-wise that allows you to win a California regional as well as your impact award? So um, this year we had um, some uh, iteration on our vision system. Uh, right now we have four cameras, uh, here two and at the top also two. Uh, and they're processed by uh, two orange pies at the bottom. Um, the orange pies uh, process everything. Um, and just uh, sends some data to the, um, through the uh, radio um, and, and this way we can exactly know where the robot is at uh, every moment um, and it's easier to uh, outer line uh, for our driver. Um, we use photon vision on it, uh, this way it's easier for us to uh, maintain the, the cameras uh, just to uh, focus uh, and type of stuff. So in pre-season and off-season, uh, we changed the base of our code to uh, command-based. Um, last year we had problems with um, there was a lot of, just a lot of code, uh, was a bit mess, uh, and if we wanted to add something, it was really difficult. Um, it was just uh, something that our team stops from uh, being better, um, and that way we, we um, changed to uh, command-based, um, so it's easier also for our new students to learn. Um, and just maintain the robot and easier to uh, add something uh, to the robot. Great iteration and autonomous features on this robot. I'd like to talk a little bit more about 3DM, data-driven decision-making. Your team's really pioneered this in the first space. Uh, Unique, can you tell me a little bit more, how does your team do that to optimize this robot? So when the game comes out, uh, the first thing that we do is uh, we take a look, obviously, at the game manual, but we also take a look at previous games and we determine which games uh, have similar aspects in it and we uh, look at the data from these games. Uh, based on that, uh, we make a, a skills list. Uh, this is all happening in the first day of build season and according to that skills list, uh, we try to uh, build a robot within our resources. Uh, this list is based on our uh, so-called 70% uh, rule. Uh, it is a, a rule that we apply and uh, it basically means that we want to reach a robot it can score 70% of the points of the highest scoring robot at Worlds. Uh, because uh, according to previous games, you have to win a California, re you can win a week one California regional when you reach at 70%. We looked at uh, uh, quite a lot of years back and, and almost every year, uh, if you would reach the 70% of the highest scoring Worlds robot in week one, you would win the regional. So we try to aim for that and uh, since we uh, don't have uh, as many resources as some of the top teams here, we really have to divide what we can and can do. So uh, we uh, try to make uh, some smarter decisions to uh, save our resources and uh, we hope to build the best role possible for week one without, the, uh, yeah, without seeing the game played before. So. Well, Team Rembrandt, thank you so much for building an incredible robot this year, but also taking the time to talk with us here on FUN. Good. My name is James with the FUN Robotics Network. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future FUN videos. Get ready for one of the most unique and competitive events of the year with the Kettering All-Star Alliance Invitational. Preform your alliance to compete against other preformed alliances for the entire competition. This event will take place August 8th and 9th, and applications are open through June 2nd. You can get more information by scanning the QR code, going to fundroboxnetwork.com slash allstar25, or checking out the post on Chief Delphi.
Andy Mark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to andymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. 